So now I've got a photograph with, with breakers installed. And notice that the top black arrow talks about a backfed main breaker. Now, if I, if I back up and we, we look at this illustration, I mentioned that that was a vertically mounted main breaker. And in this case, we talk about a backfed main breaker. And that particular main breaker is mounted as a branch device, but as I mentioned, it is backfed at the main. You may be familiar with that term. Maybe this is the first time you've heard that term, but all of the other breakers within that panel board are what we call forward-fed breakers. And by a forward fed breaker, we mean that that breaker is getting power from the bus stack. And then on the load side or the off end of that breaker, those breakers are feeding respective loads. However, this breaker is being mounted as a branch, but power is entering into the lugs that I'm pointing to there with my yellow arrow and then it is back feeding that breaker into the bus stack. Power enters, it enters in this area here. Power continues through the main breaker. Power then is distributed through the bus stack and then also distributed through all of the respective branch breakers. And then the load side lugs of those branch breakers, whether it be on that side or over here on this side, power is then being distributed to all of their respective loads. Back feeding breakers in I-line panel boards is a very, very common practice. We do it uh, a lot in, in I-line construction. So it gives us some flexibility because let's just say down here, let's talk about another topic it says, or a subfeed lug kit. And if you've never seen a subfeed lug kit for an I-line panel board, it has the appearance of a, of a breaker, but it has no handle. And inside of the breaker, it has no overcurrent protection. So if this was a 1200 amp subfeed lug kit, it would look like this breaker. It's made out of the same breaker case, but it has no operator mech and it has no overcurrent protection. So in this case, I can take a subfeed lug kit, remove this breaker, and easily install a subfeed lug kit in its place. And now I've converted this panel board from a main breaker panel board to a main lug panel board. As well, if I left this breaker in place, and that's a 1200 amp R frame breaker, and I was to take a subfeed lug kit, a 1200 amp subfeed lug kit, and mount it, say, up in this area here, now I'm utilizing that subfeed lug kit as a feed through lug. Because if you recall, feed through lugs are always mounted on the opposite end of the main. So even though they're defined as a subfeed lug kit, we use those kits for a number of different reasons. We, we use it for a subfeed lug kit. We use it for backfed main lugs. And we utilize it for feed through lugs. So again, we just take one product and, and we have a lot of flexibility with that product. And again, just a couple of things that I want to point out. This talks about the, the back feeding of a breaker. Again, the photograph shows that, that vertically mounted main. But the, the one thing that I do want to point out uh, in this particular information, is, in both of them, is note number two, where it talks if it's a main lug application and you have a back fed subfeed lug kit, that backfed subfeed lug kit uses mounting inches. And note number two under main breaker says the same thing about an I-line 
breaker being back bed uses mounting inches. And if you look at this photograph, on each side of that bus stack on the mounting pan, that's what we call the mounting inches that run vertically in that particular interior. So in, in, on a, in the case of a backfed device, it's going to consume a little bit of that mounting inches that would typically be, uh, in this photograph, typically be dedicated to specific branch breakers because in this case we have a vertically mounted main which does not consume any mounting inches in that mounting pan. Mm -hmm.